Hi guys, this is Tech Audio. Welcome you to this video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core 2.2 web API application with Angular 7 frontend. And in this video tutorial, we will continue working on our product controller. In last video tutorial, we finished coding the get products HTTP get method, which gets a list of all products from our database. In this video tutorial, we will create the HTTP post method, which will create a new product basically add a new product in our database the users will fill out the form in the front end and they will then post the data we will receive the data and then add it to the database so let's go ahead and do that first thing what we want to do is just let's get rid of all these sample methods that was created by our controller we don't need them next thing that we want to do is go ahead and create an http post action method And as you know, we will add the action tag here. So we can use the action name when we call this method. We will also name this method as add product because we are adding a product. So public, it's an asynchronous method and it's a task. So which will turn an I action result. And we will call this method as add product. So where are we going to add this product from? We are going to add the product. The details of the product come from the body of our application from body. And we have to bind the details that we received into a product model. So let's go ahead and create an object of product model and call this form data because all the data comes from a form. Now let's add the missing reference. So now let's go ahead and start creating the method. So first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we create a new object out of the data we received. So let's create variable, call it new product is equal to new product model and inside this product model now we are going to specify the values for each property so name of the product is equal to form data dot name so go ahead and complete this so I have added the remaining properties and assigned the values that we receive from form data to this new product model properties. Now our product, new product is created, but now we have to go ahead and add this new product to our database. So we will use our dependency injection object for our database, then call the products entity. And then now we will call the add asynchronously method. It will asynchronously add a product so now what is the product the product is a new product so let's add it error because it's an asynchronous method so we have to await for the result now it's not going to add the product yet because we have to run one more command we need to save the changes in order for it to add it into our databases product table so once again we will call the dependency injection object and call the save changes asynchronously method and now the product will be added once again await operator here and finally if the product is added we will send a return ok response that's it so now when the product is added we can go ahead and see that if we received an okay response if we did not receive an okay response then we should get an error so i have not created a method to handle the error we can do that later we can totally create a new video where we will look after the error handling but for now just these are basic methods because this application is something that i just want to introduce you to how we can implement CRUD functionalities in your angular using ASP.NET Web API. So now let's go ahead and quickly 
create the second method which is again an HTTP method but in this case we want to update the product so in order to update the product we will use the HTTP put method and then we are going to once again pass the action attribute here because we want to call this method by its action name and now we want to also create a public asynchronous method and it is a task of type i action result let's call this method as update product and here inside braces we are going to code the method now when we want to update a product we obviously need to specify which product we want to update therefore we need to provide the ID of the product that we need to update therefore where are we going to get this ID from we can get the ID from the form body or we can get the ID from the URL itself so if somebody is let's say accessing a product viewing a product so they will be on a page like API forward slash product forward slash the products ID itself so let's say the products ID is one so now they are actually accessing or editing the product with the ID one so this means we are going to get the ID of the product from the route not from the body so that's why we will put the from route attribute over here from route and from route what are we going to get we are going to get the ID of the product which is of type int so int ID that should be it now the remaining details like the products description the image URL the art of stock these values are going to come from the body so let's put from body and what we want to do we want to create a product model and bind these values to a product model as we did when we created the new product now we know that we have to edit these values on the products whose ID is specified in the route so now let's go ahead and write our method first thing we want to do is verify if the model state is valid so model state dot is valid method will provide us with that result so if it's not valid what we want to do is we want to return bad request and with the bad request we want to return the model state so model state and then finally what we want to do is if the model state is valid we need to then find the product by this id so call this variable as find product and we want to get the product by id once again we will use our dependency injection product called the products entity which will contain all the products and then we want to find the product so we will use the first or default method here and inside the first or default method we will get the product whose id is the id specified in the route so let's use some lambda expression here and we'll say p dot product id is equal to equal to the id which is specified in the parameter here now it will find a product with that id if it finds a product it will store it if the result is null also it will store it. if it didn't find a product with that id it's still going to store the result here so let's add an if condition here saying if find product is equal to null which means no product was found then we are going to return a response saying not found and as you know this is because we are using the i action with i enumerable we couldn't do that that's one more reason why we changed it so now 
want to say if the product was found what do we do if the product is found obviously we want to edit it so find product dot the product was found so the name of the product is equal to form data dot name so we will put the new values that we received on to this now let's go ahead and complete these remaining values so the remaining values i have added them so i have assigned the values that we received from form data product to our product that was with the specified id now once again the values are not yet updated we have to run this method using entity framework we are going to update it so we'll call the entry method this entry method will help us to modify the entity so the entity that we want to modify is our fine product and then we want to modify the state and then we want to say is equal to entity state dot modified so this is possible because of entity framework we can modify the state rather than calling the update method and so we can find the product and then modify the state so it will modify the values if any values let's say was updated any value was not updated so it will not modify it but if any values were updated it will modify those values so let's add the missing reference here using microsoft's entity framework core and then do you think it's going to update the values no it's not because we have to call the db dot save changes asynchronous method now the values will be updated and then we put the await operator so values updated but we need to tell that to our client who's updating the value so we'll send an ok response and in the ok response we want to send a new json result so if, when we send this json result we can actually use it in like your models or anything like the json object that we receive values we can put it on a model or on, on an alert box you know use javascript as well jquery so you can use this so let's say the product with id now let's add the id is the id then again concatenate saying is updated so this way the client will know the product is updated now we have created the update product method the add product method and we also need to delete the product because the admin would want to delete the product because it's out of stock or it's no longer in the no longer in stock or it's no longer they are not selling that product anymore so they want to delete it so let's create an http delete method here once again let's add the action attribute because we want to call this method by its action name let's call this method now async and the task call this method delete product and here once again when we want to delete the product we want to know which product to delete therefore we need to know the id of the product so we will get the id from the route so let's do this specify and we don't need to specify any other details we just get the id and we delete that product that's it so first thing we will validate if model state is valid not then send it back next thing we want to do is find the product so find the product same thing that we did for the update so we are going to find the product 
here to find the product I'm going to use a different method like here I used first or default now I'm going to use variable find product just to know that you can use different ways in your code and it's an asynchronous so in this code d db dot uh, products entity dot we have a method called as find async we can use this and specify the id of the product that we want to find here now we found the product now if the result returned null so what we want to do is we want to say if this result returned null we want to send the product was not found same procedure now the if the product we found a product obviously we want to delete it so underscore db dot products entity dot there is no delete method it's called a remove method so we remove it so we don't have an asynchronous method to delete the product in case if your requirement is to delete the for the deletion to take place on a different thread so i will recommend you to create a thread for that and then run the deletion deleting process on that thread but as of now we don't have a remove asynchronous method for that and finally what we want to do is will it, do you think it's going to delete it no because we have to run the save changes asynchronously method now the product is deleted finally you want to send a response back to the user or the client so let's send the response back to the client that the product was deleted so that's it for all our three controller action methods where we can add a product we can delete a product and we can update a product in the next video tutorial we will test these methods using postman to make sure that the code is working fine and if there's any error we will modify or edit our code please like and subscribe my channel tech howdy the code will be provided in the description of the video thank you so much